In the glittering world of high fashion, one name reigns supreme, shrouded in as much mystery as glamour, Coco Chanel. But behind the facade of sequins and Chanel No. 5 lies a tale of ambition, scandals, betrayals, and a lonely end that few know about. From rags to riches, Chanel didn't just dress the elite, she became the embodiment of Parisian chic. Join us today as we uncover her life and scandals, from orphan to icon, from her romance with a Nazi to her lonely death, all while fighting to gain control of the brand that still bears her name. Today we uncover Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel's early years were anything but easy. Born Gabrielle Bonheur Chanel in 1883 in the town of Sommer, France, Chanel experienced extreme poverty from a young age. Her parents were unmarried when she was born. Her mother soon died. Chanel claimed it was tuberculosis, but according to sources, it was probably illness brought on by poverty. Her father adopted her and her siblings, but soon he abandoned them, leaving Chanel and her sisters at an orphanage. There, Chanel struggled to accept the strict rules and firmly believed every week that soon her father would come to take her home, but he never did. Later, when Chanel's fame grew, she began to resent what happened. In fact, according to many, she tried to escape her family through self-mythologizing rather than tell the full truth. I don't like my family, she once said. You're born in it, not of it. I don't know anything more terrifying than family. Upon finally leaving the orphanage where she was raised, Coco Chanel began to carve together a living. While she was taking her first steps in the world of fashion through a job as a seamstress, she also earned money by singing at a bar called La Rotonde. The bar was reportedly a hotspot for local soldiers. Her two songs were Coco Rico and Kika Vu Coco. This is where she first got the name Coco. Chanel later claimed this story was a myth intended to imply that I have come up from goodness knows where, from the music hall, the opera, or the brothel. I'm sorry for that would have been more amusing, she said. Instead, she claimed that Coco was a nickname given to her by her father. Once again, Chanel, it seems, was embarrassed about her true past. Eventually, Coco Chanel opened her first shop, Chanel Modes, where she sold hats. While the shop was, in many ways, an exciting first step into the world of fashion, it was also clouded by her complicated love life, which was, from the beginning, intertwined with her professional life. Around this time, Chanel had not one but two lovers, Etienne Balsan, a French officer, and Boy Capel, an Englishman. When Chanel tried to leave Balsan to be with Capel, a dramatic scene ensued. We lunched and dined together, Etienne, Boy, and I, Chanel later recalled. Occasionally, Etienne talked about killing himself, and I wept. I wept so. You aren't going to let Etienne kill himself, I said to myself. You'll set them both free. Go throw yourself into the Seine. Despite all the drama and anguish, the two men ultimately joined together to help Chanel open her shop. Soon enough, Coco Chanel's shop took off. Although Chanel's clothing was high-end, her classic style was actually inspired by her impoverished upbringing. It was dubbed the genre pova, or the poor style. Her clothes were simple, understated, and surprisingly unflashy. By using simple jersey fabric traditionally only seen in cheaper clothing, Chanel reinvented the very meaning of luxury. She also included references in her fashion to the clothing that had been worn by the nuns at her old orphanage. Ultimately, she brought the notion of comfort into the fashion world. Luxury must be comfortable, otherwise it is not luxury, she once said. Another tragedy befell Coco Chanel when her older sister Julia died around 1910. Julia died by suicide when she discovered her husband's infidelity. Julia left behind a son, Andre, who had been born during Julia's time in the convent. His father was unknown. Chanel adopted her nephew, and after living with him briefly, she sent him to a school in England, the same one Chanel's lover, Boy Capel, had once attended. Although little is known about Chanel's relationship with her nephew, upon her death, she left much of her estate to him and his daughters. Tragedy struck once again for Coco Chanel in 1919, when Boy died in a car crash. Many believe that he was the greatest love of Chanel's life, and his death hit her hard. I lost everything with the loss of him, the designer later confessed. After his death, Chanel is said to have read novels as a means of connecting with Capel, who had first inspired in her a love of literature. As another magazine reported, 
One of Chanel's most prized possessions was her copy of Paul Moran's novel, Louis and Irene, which is said to have been inspired by her affair with Capel. Many years later, the Chanel brand also reportedly created the famous boy bag in his honor. Throughout the 1930s, Coco Chanel's career continued to soar. However, not all of her ventures were wholly successful. Along with her hugely popular fashion line and her iconic number no. five perfume, Chanel also dipped her toe into the world of Hollywood costume design. However, despite Chanel's fame as a fashion designer, as a costume designer, she was less successful. Critics seemed to think that her designs weren't exciting enough for the screen. She made a lady look like a lady. Hollywood wants a lady to look like two ladies, wrote one for The New Yorker, while a Hollywood costumer said, the most elegant Chanel was a washout on the screen. After the death of Boy Capel, Coco Chanel embarked on another meaningful love affair, this time with Hugh Grosvenor, the Duke of Westminster. Even though the Duke was already married, they spent a lot of time together, and she even spent holidays with him in Scotland. Although Chanel's relationship with the Duke was, of course, filled with many happy moments, ultimately, it marked another tragedy for the designer. Her past and position made it impossible for men such as the Duke to marry her. Coco Chanel had dedicated her life to her fashion empire, but in the 1930s, the onset of World War II brought it all crashing down, at least for a time. France was, of course, occupied by the Nazis for much of the war. At the beginning of the war, Chanel closed her couture house and withdrew to the shores of Lake Geneva, where she lived for 15 years on the royalties of her perfumes. Over the years, Chanel's questionable association with the Nazis during the war has come to light. For one thing, Chanel was having an affair with a German throughout the war. It is also believed that Chanel acted as a spy for a time. According to RFI, she operated under the code name Westminster and traded secrets in the hopes that the Germans would release her nephew from a war prison. She also tried to gain control of the Chanel No. 5 brand as her partner was a Jew, Pierre Wartimer, and many who knew her claimed that she made no secret of her anti-Semitism. At the time, she owned only 10% of the Chanel brand, as it had been financed by Wertheimer, among others. However, she was unsuccessful with this and spent years in legal battles with the Wertheimer family and never got more than 10% of the brand. The family still own the rights to the brand to this day. After what was essentially an exile from France and from the fashion world altogether, Coco Chanel managed to orchestrate an unlikely comeback. In 1954, at the age of 71, she returned to France with a brand new collection and reopened her couture house for the first time since the war. It was at this time that the famous Chanel suit was born. According to Business of Fashion, she was largely shunned by the industry in France. However, she did find some success in America and Britain. This was enough for the Chanel brand to continue on and become the success it still is today. Sadly for Chanel, but perhaps fairly, she never again got to experience the levels of success she had once enjoyed in France before the war. Although Coco Chanel had a number of intense love affairs throughout her life, she never married or had children of her own. By all accounts, at the end of her life, she was lonely. Chanel died on January 10, 1971, at the age of 87 at the Ritz in Paris, where she had been living. Her end was very gentle. We are dismayed because nothing in the days running up to it led us to believe this would happen, a friend said later. However, it seems that Chanel might have sensed her life was almost over. According to staff members at her fashion house, she had been working feverishly in the days before her death. Her last words were to a housemate at the hotel. You see, this is how you die. As we reflect on the life of Coco Chanel, we are reminded of the complexities that define human existence. Her journey, marked by innovation and controversy, paints the picture of a woman far ahead of her time, yet deeply affected by her era. Chanel's legacy in fashion is indisputable, a testament to her relentless creativity and enduring vision. While her last words echo a poignant acceptance of life's final act, her influence continues to resonate in every stitch and seam of the fashion world. How do you view Chanel and her story? Was it a story of rags to riches? Or was she a Nazi sympathizer and opportunist? 
I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching our short look at the death of Chanel. And stay tuned every Friday for a deeper dive into stories and people. Your comments, likes, and shares are deeply appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching.